Hey, FR Sky people. This is Steve with Free Sky, and today we're going to talk about the wonderful world of trainers. Um, this subject was brought up to me by somebody who asked for help, and I decided to make them a video and share it with everyone. And this is more of a simple, no nonsense discussion on how trainers work. Um, I've got a lot of it already set up so we can save ourselves some time, but. Um, I really think this is one of the stronger features. It's probably the least, it's like the best kept secret we have at FreeSky is the tr Bluetooth trainer. Uh, anything that has the name Para, P-A-R-A in it, uh, and that includes videos like the Tyrannus X9D Plus from 2019, the one that runs Access. A lot of the radios that run Access have Para built into the transmitter. And so you can use this with a fair number of radios, but every single tandem transmitter, including the X18, has it, and every single twin transmitter also has it. So um, a practical example of how these things work is that there's Bluetooth, and what you do is you uh, have to be within, I'd say, about 20, 25 feet of someone in order to work with the Bluetooth transmit module usually you want to talk to the person so you're usually fairly close and the bluetooth is working just fine um i did use this at a jet event i managed to talk someone to let me flying their uh fly their jet and he had a jet set up with an x20s transmitter so it was a model that was ready to go it, it was vetted it worked fine and i said hey can you just let me uh flip a switch and let me fly your plane on my transmitter and he's like, you can, wait, we can actually buddy box with our transmitters? And he was like expecting the way I have a cable or something. And I'm like, no, no, it's done with Bluetooth. So typically um, for me to explain to you how this works, I have to come to your field and fly your plane. Um, so I usually hold that for turbine jets in particular. Or no, you can watch this too. I mean, um, I'm going to show you how we set it up on both a slave and a master. Um, this is the master radio, and I'll tell you what, we're gonna get into this in a minute. We're gonna go right into the slave radio. So I know it's a slave. Imagine this is another transmitter altogether. Receiver is still on, and throttle not idle, switch warning. What I've done here is I set up <coughs> a real basic, um, the, the main rule I have is you just want to set up a new model. So I created a very simple model. And um, you can, the one thing I will also, a little secret I'll let you in on is you can actually do something like an aileron rudder mix. So you can put this in the last position. And by default, it has a 20% positive weight. So what would happen you can see it's on channel four it's one of the channels that's already established so that as you turn the ailerons the rudder would also move uh, what i did is i also went in here and created a free mix and with that free mix i created something called landing gear and put it on switch d and so this would be essentially a well set up plane now if there's anything i needed to do as far as the model, if once we get the trainer set up and something's backwards, you'd have to fix it in the sleigh radio, which is this one. And we're going to pretend that there's one error with this, and that is the rudder's backwards. So all you would have to do is invert it. And all of a sudden, when this is all set up, you'll see later on when they're all set up, you're going to test the radio link. And um you want to check the control surfaces on the slave radio they should work properly if the ailerons are reversed you'll likely crash the plane so make sure you check all the control surfaces on the both master and slave radios all right so to set up the slave radio all we do is go into the system icon right there click on wireless and it's usually set to off and you just go in here and turn on trainer and then it's going to have a local address. I always pay attention to the last three digits. And the, and the example, they end with H2O. I'll remember H2O as the local address for the, um, 
the slave radium. Now I go into uh, models on this particular model. Let's just well, this one is. I should also show you that when it comes inside of here, the RF system, nothing's turned on, everything's off. It doesn't matter. You do not bind the slave radio to the plane. If you did that, it would have to be flown as a master radio. So you just you don't turn on any RF whatsoever. Um, but we're going to go into the next screen right over here and go into trainer and typically it's off and the slave radio we just set up a slave and we turn wireless on and you'll see the local address is going to be and with the h2o and we're done with the slave radio for now now to go into the master typically you don't go from one model to the other Throttle, not usually, idle fail safe the, not the two set. radios are next Switch to each warning. other so the master what do we do? Well, we kind of repeat the steps that we just went over. So we turn on wireless, make sure it goes from off to trainer, and we don't pay attention to what the local address is this time. You go into hardware. No, you don't go into hardware. You go into the second screen right here, which is trainer. And this one is off by default, and this time we're going to set it to master. Turn wireless on. All of a sudden, everything works. Um, as far as you're going to need to do one thing before we search for devices, and that is establish a switch that when you, whenever you turn it on, the Bluetooth trainer will come on. So I just slide it on switch D down. And you can see that I'm gonna I can flip the switch virtually. First two positions are off. And when it gets to the third position, it's on. You'll see that the whenever you see this icon in red right here, that uh, means that you would um, if you had a slave radio hooked up, um, you could uh, connect to it and then that would be your connection hopefully it turns green that would turn green and all these would turn green and everything is set up on a series of replace so it's a one-to-one -one. whatever is on channel one on the slave radio is going to correspond to slave to a uh, channel one on the master radio so Typically, that's how it works. Channel 1 on the slave radio is going to replace the aileron whenever it's activated. 2 is going to replace elevator. 3 is going to replace throttle. 4 is going to replace rudder. Um, channel 5 is usually turned off, so you would have to go in. If it's turned off like this, you would have to go in and hit replace. And make sure you select channel 5, and then that should be good. Um, and then when these things are working, what will happen is whenever you switch channel, when you see the icon come on and the green lights are, everything's working. When you move the sticks on the slave radio, the mass, you'll see these things light up. These things will go left and right whenever you move the elevator up and down. Um, ailerons will move left and right as well. So you'll see everything light up. You have to make sure everything is lit up. You also have to have the plug, the plane plugged in so you can see the control surfaces working. In. And if anything's reversed, you have to fix them. Um, you can also go in and do things, just a little note, you can turn off things. So if you wanted to, we can go in here and turn off channels three and four. All right, so with these two things off, channel five is still replaced, but at least I have no destination. What I've done is I've essentially taken away the left stick from the student. So even though I switched the radio and give them control, I still have to provide the throttle and as a master or the teacher, and I would still have control of the rudder. Um, and then when I flip the switch D off, you'll see that icon turn off. And um, I have full control once again. And then whenever I flip the switch back on, uh, they have control of the two control surfaces, just the, the one stick, which is the elevator and aileron. Um, 
maybe later on if they're starting to get the hang of it you might want to give them channel three which is the throttle so then they have aileron elevator throttle still no rudder and you know rudders used so infrequently a lot of times by newbies that they probably won't notice if it's missing so you might as well just give them control of that as well at the same time give them both sticks and they're ready to fly i've talked to a number of people who train and they all have different philosophies how to train a lot of guys just give them full control of everything um now i did mention that if you go down here the one thing that we had which was a bit of a mess was that channel six so let me show you go into here mixer channel six was the landing gear i know the tundra does not have retractable landing gear but just pretend it does um but it's channel seven on this one so how do you do that well we'll take it back into it and go into trainer and so the thing is whatever this is this is the first thing it shows this is channel six coming from the slave radio and it show, and now it shows no destination and what it wants to do is put it on channel six of the master radio but we don't want it on channel six we want it on channel seven um channel seven is marked improperly it's not flaps it will say landing gear but anyways that's how you do it you would turn the mode to replace and you would have channel six go to channel seven and that should be everything if you have any questions feel free to write me i'm steve at free sky negative sign rc.com Thank you for watching. Have a great day.